Lynn's been in the game ever since it released, but she's always been sort of second fiddle to so many other Sword Lords, even from the beginning. Then this Lady of the Plains got a little bit more... refined. Whether she's your peerless warrior or your pity rate breaker, we're gonna go ahead and make her a killing machine. So Lynn comes to us with a decent speed, and it actually hasn't gotten better over time, unfortunately. Uh, and her attack is abysmal, but her default sword ability is Desperation 2. Uh, all the old weapons are really just garbage before their refinement. Once you refine Soul Caddy, however, oof, not only does it give you Desperation 3, but it gives you a special version of Brash Assault. And so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and talk about a build that's going to leverage this new refinement uh, so that you could just completely destroy things on the battlefield. And I mean Lin just needed this help. <laughs> Even my four-year-old didn't want to use Lin whenever she takes my phone and plays Fire Emblem. Then again, with uh, so many units that have uh, vibrant pink or blue hair, and even one of them that screams out, Eat this, pal! I guess she had some hard competition. <laughs> she also really likes Legion and Valter, which sort of scares me. And real quick, I want to say, if there are any other heroes out there that you want to see covered with their new refinements, let me know down in the comments. And plus one, people who have gotten in there and said, like, oh, I want to see this hero, that hero that you agree with. Because the more pl uh, uh, thumbs up that I see, the more comments I see on a particular hero, the more likely I am to do it. Specifically, this video was inspired by Misha Texan in a previous video in the comments. So thank you so much for the idea. And yeah, if you want to see something else, let me know. So here is the kit that I want to discuss. Uh, we're going to go ahead and give her her refine. Give her Moonbow as her special. That way it's going to proc often. And it should pretty much proc every single fight that we have once we get going. Because we have Wrath in the B slot. Now this is probably the most pain in the butt part of the build because not only are you talking about getting Lin who as of recording is only available in the five star pool but now you're talking about getting Wrath which is only available on one unit period as of recording. Uh, in the future I hope that really changes but for right now I mean uh, poor Nephany is pretty much just fodder at this point in time but if you have a minus attack or minus speed one this is a great use for it. Let me go ahead and talk about a few budget options right now. Fury is a decent substitution it doesn't really do us all that many favors. Uh, she has a terrible defense as it is you don't need to have that extra six damage every time you get pinged. It's not doing you any good. Uh, also, what uh, Life and Death is surprisingly a fantastic substitute. As a matter of fact, in several cases, it is better, especially uh, beforehand, it's better on her than what Swift Sparrow is. But Swift Sparrow is there for a few reasons. One, it is there to preserve her defenses just a little bit. And secondly, it is there because it gets you more arena points if you have a full built-out kit. And if that's what you're trying to do with her, uh, points matter. So, I know what you're thinking, you're looking at that A slot and you're going, well you know what, uh, I just pulled some great fodder from a recent legendary banner, or I just pulled uh, Ares and I hate merging good units, so I'd much rather put a Braze and Attack skill as the A slot because it synergizes well, below 80%, you need to get below 75% anyway, uh, it seems like a win-win. And you know what, if you go to your uh, combat simulator of choice, and you plug in the numbers, you're going to find out that once you're within that range for uh, Brash and Desperation, you're right. You're going to get more kills against the Vanilla list uh, than you are against uh, that same list using Swift Sparrow. But I have two problems uh, with this particular idea. First one is, is that Brazen Attack, uh, any variety, doesn't work until you're at 80%. That means that in the beginning, you are a wet noodle going against so many different units right now, and that cuts down your possible attack surface by half, being able to actually kill something, because you can't leave her standing next to somebody. She doesn't have the defenses for that. Uh, she just doesn't. Even if you go with attack and defense, which is what's on Ares, 
uh, the defense is not doing anything for you it is an absolutely terrible idea. And if you run the numbers on it, you'll find out that it it's not enough. I, I could go a whole video talking about how to use brazen skills, but I I'm not going to do that. So uh, let's move on. But you're probably already sitting there thinking, well, no, I'm just going to go ahead and give her Ardent Sacrifice or Reciprocal Aid so that I can accelerate into that range a little bit faster. And yeah, that's a viable way to do things. I'm not a big fan of accelerating into that. I'm not desperate to lose hit points. Get it? Get? Okay, sorry, never mind. Uh, the idea is that you can that's definitely something you could do and there are some units that would love to have uh some hit points back so that they could continue to do their job however if first of all if you're giving other people your hit points you're probably gonna just use that unit you probably don't need to use lynn lynn is definitely extra and is now dead weight she's a battery for you and there are better batteries that you could just carry around with you uh than lynn secondly does not do all the jobs that she needs to do uh, without a lot of help. And so I would like to share with you a way that I like to easily figure out how a unit is going to perform. And that method is by comparing a win and loss record to a list called Delchan's PvP Threats. Link is down the doobly-doo to see the document I use. Uh, this is just simply a set of monstrous builds that you often find in arena that are going to cause you all kinds of nightmares going up against and so we're going to go ahead and walk through some win and loss records using both of these builds and compare and contrast a little bit so that we understand what we're gaining and what we're giving up so going with swift sparrow and i am doing this with plus attack ivs uh i think that uh i think that's fair for several reasons and i'll get to that after we talk about this analysis but Assuming that you're plus attack IV, uh, we're getting 10 wins on initiation, which is great. Uh, there are 14 people that just kill us immediately whenever we initiate against them. Uh, but if we take a look at this list of people that uh, we're killing on initiation, I mean, this is this is a healthy list. There's not too many uh, extra pieces of cruft here or there. The uh, so that's really nice. And uh, yeah, it's. We do have, uh, we definitely have to watch out uh, on the other end. I mean, like, there's reds and greens that are still killing us if we initiate on them. I mean, specifically armor, but armor is everywhere. Uh, we don't die to, but we don't kill Fa in this particular case either. So that's one thing to be aware of, is, is that we're a little weak on dragons, and armor is a little iffy for us uh, right now. Let's see what happens once we're charged up real quick, just so we know what we're working towards, okay? 24 wins on initiation. Uh, just look at these obituaries going through. I mean, we're adding so many faces to it. Uh, it's... I love it. I love it. And uh, the, the, kill, the wins that we're getting are very important. I mean, we're getting Grima. We're getting Murr. So we're getting, and it's strange, without a falchion, it's rare that a red sword unit is actually killing both of them. It's true. Go ahead and just grab a non-falchion user, uh, which is like almost becoming rare anymore, and plug them in. You'll see the uh, killing both of them from the DPT. Don't cheat and go with like their generic kits, you know, put a real build on them. And then you will see that you're going to have a hard time killing both of them without uh, some serious uh, team involvement. She doesn't need a team to do this. She could just walk right in there and do it, which is amazing. It lets you just position what, however you need to, and it gives you that flexibility whenever things go south or whenever you get into that stupid wall map in Arena or whenever you're in an infernal uh, PvE map and you have to have somebody separate it off because of uh, trying to pull people. It is so helpful that someone can just do their darn job, and that's what she's doing here. Uh, she's bouncing a lot of things, and you know what, on the losing side now, I mean, we just have a lot that's not not anything to be concerned about. Now, if we switch out for Brazen Attack and Speed, you, what you have going on here is, is that you only have six kills on Initiation. And, okay, I'm cheating a little bit here. Uh, that's not with the Plus Attack IV. With the Plus Attack IV, now you're getting eight. Okay, you pick up two more people. You pick up Winter Crom. Well, good pickup and you're picking up uh the green Owen, which 
is surprising that you couldn't kill her to begin with. So that is something there. The reason why I don't like this is because you don't have the ability to kill Grima anymore in initiation without being uh, in desperation range. And if you don't see him in arena, then okay, you know what, that's fine. Once you get to high tier, and actually once you get to a higher tier, not even real high tier, I'm not even talking about tier 20, like starting once you get the four orbs, you see Grima. <laughs> you see him before that, but he's not optimal. Once you get to that high level, people are really investing in him with steady and warding breath, uh, with the quick repose seal. Uh, if you haven't fought that yet, then you, then it's hard to imagine you needing to really optimize the build for that. Once it's there, and if you're putting a red unit on your team, it better darn well be able to handle Grima. Uh, and that's exactly what this lets you do. Now, sure, if you go ahead and start to give uh, a lot of things, like if you give plus attack IV, if you give summoner support, if you give a home bonus, if you give ally support, if you do all that stuff, then yeah, you're starting to like get up to like 16 wins, and you're taking care of Murr and Grima on initiation. Hey, that's great. Well, with that exact same support, you're able to get to like 24 wins on the other set, and then you're starting to body people like Naoi. I mean, <laughs> yeah, it gets a, it gets really crazy. The uh, difference here is is that this is a lot more of a sure thing going with Swiss Sparrow, uh, or Life and Death. To be quite honest with you, the matchups aren't changed too much going with Life and Death. If you need to have like a budget version of this, or if you just can't seem to get Swiss Sparrow fodder, Life and Death is actually going to work out very, very well for you. Now, if I haven't convinced you not to use a Brazen skill, I need to let you know that Brazen attack and speed is actually very important. Brazen attack and defense is pretty much useless. The reason why I say this is because, one, that extra defense, once she loses those hit, those hit points, it's... N I mean, guys, at neutral hit points, she is going to trigger that once she hits... Uh, 32 hit points, okay? You're getting 7 defense from that, that's an effective 39 hit points. She's not defending against anything new. It's not helping her. She doesn't have the normal defense to be able to actually make that worthwhile, so it's not getting you anywhere. Also, the other problem is, is that there's a skill out there called Swordbreaker, and what this does is it ruins a unit's ability, if they're using a sword, uh, to actually double tap on somebody. But, Soul Candy with its uh, refinement uh, special uh, does something really weird with Swordbreaker. So what happens is Swordbreaker is a thing that modifies how much someone can attack. Uh, Desperation and uh, Brash Assault specifically is modifying how somebody can attack. Both of these skills cancel each other out, okay? So once they cancel each other out, it falls solely onto speed. And if you are adding plus 7 onto your speed from Brazen Attack and Speed, then you are going to be able to still double that person. Uh, units that like to have uh, uh, Sword Breaker are going to, best scenario, not just not die. Worst scenario, still kill you because you're already low on hit points and you thought that defense would help you. Um, you need uh, Brazen Attack and Speed. If, if you go that route, that is the only way to do it. Don't mess with a uh, brazen attack and defense. And lastly, to round all of this out, I want to talk about some seals because I did leave that as a flex spot here for you. And you know, you can go with some basic stuff. You could go with a plus attack seal. If you haven't noticed, attack is really what we're missing here. Uh, speed is not crucial anymore because we get unless it's sword breaker uh you get an automatic double tap against people that can retaliate on us okay so that's that's an important note <laughs> but you get that uh, ability there so speed is not super important you could just go with a generic attack seal you could do attack and defense plus two if you had that new seal and you want to use on somebody um once you're only talking about those few buffs uh, that plus one attack is not going to be that huge uh, what you can do though uh 
is uh, try to match for a couple other fights that are out there. And if you want to go something like Quick Impulse, it lets you initiate on the Reinhardt and kill him in the beginning, which is really nice. If you need to have a counter for that, that's good. But uh, if you really need a Reinhardt counter, uh, not counter, I misspoke, uh, somebody who can at least initiate and kill. If you need a unit that can kill off units like uh, Bolin, uh, you know, our doppelganger and uh, the Reinhardt, then what you need to do is go with Defense Boy. Uh, especially if you keep Swiss Barrow, if you don't do the life and death thing, uh, or if you go with a Brazen, uh, then you have 29 resistance, which is plenty. Uh, lots of units are now just basically giving up uh, 5 defense uh, just because you want them to. And that helps out a lot. It helps, uh, for, uh, it's basically 10 really free damage on top of somebody. It is so powerful uh, that it is probably one of the best options for her just in general. Although honestly if you already have that set out or if you just don't have that yet, any plus a, a attack seal is going to do well for you. It's going to round off some corners and even with uh, a, a brazen set it'll help ease some of but not all of the pain that you have. Uh, with uh, not having any type of special that's uh, a slot that's ready to go whenever the fight starts. So that's what I think about Lynn. I'm super excited for her now. I'm so glad she got this refinement. Uh, but what do you think? Let me know down in the comments or jump in on the Discord server, link down the doobly doo. Uh, talk to me, DM me, do whatever. I want to know what your thoughts are about Lynn. Uh, and also, don't forget to go ahead and let me know who you want to see next in this series. Otherwise, I'll just do whatever I want to do. <laughs> but with that said, thank you guys so much. I greatly appreciate all of you. And until next time, take it easy.